who doesn't love a bit of distortion in your tracks here in GarageBand? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the very cool and free audio unit distortion plugin from Apple. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And we're back here in GarageBand taking a look at what is probably one of the more complex of our plugins here in GarageBand. But don't worry, I'm going to take you through every detail and get you up and running in this video. So a quick refresher, if you haven't used plugins before, we need to tap on the mixer icon here in the top left, or it may be on the top right in a smaller iPhone. We tap on plugins and EQ. We hit the edit button here in the top right corner, hit on one of these plus buttons, and then hit on audio unit extensions. And here are all 15 of these free AU plugins from Apple. Now, if you haven't got these here, there's another video linked up the top and in the description that shows you how to download and get these on your device and be good to go. So what we're gonna do now is tap on distortion to add in our distortion plugin and now we can start dialing in our settings. So we now need to tap on the orange icon here and here are all of the settings. In fact, there's two screens worth of them. If you scroll across to the right, there's a whole second screen of these. Now this looks pretty complicated, but it's actually very simple. It's four separate modules as well as some master controls that we have. And the easiest way to show you this is to show you this. What it is actually based on is the audio unit distortion plugin from Mac version of GarageBand. So you can see there, we've got a delay module. We've got a ring modulator. We've got a decimation module, overdrive, and then finally a master control there. And all of those dials relate to all of these dials. So I'll show you each one as we go through and what each one of these does. But if all that sounds way too complicated, we have presets in this plugin, yes. So we can tap in the bottom left here and you can see here we've got a whole bunch of presets. Now in my personal experience, these presets all sound kind of terrible. So I don't use a lot of these if I'm using the distortion plugin, but you can play around and experiment with them. In fact, let's just tap on this one, say the multi echo one and hit play or just come out here and solo this bass track. And let's hit play and take a listen to this sound with our distortion plugin. So you can hear there, it's definitely using the delay module here and it's adding in some other sort of gain and clipping there to create this overall distortion. Now, what you will notice though, is when you change these, it doesn't change these. Yes, it's a bit of a pain in that you can change what you have here, but it won't actually change what's mixed out here. As soon as you start touching it, then it will adjust those, but it's not gonna show you a display. You just have to trust the plugin and trust the preset that it's gonna be what you want. So the better way to use this is to actually manually dial in everything yourself and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, before we start dialing in our settings, I'm putting everything just back down to zero. That way we know we're starting from absolute scratch and there's gonna be nothing from this preset that's actually going to be on here. Now, the most important dials that we have here are these last two, which correspond with those master dials on the other plug in there. So our wet dry mix is how much of the overall sound from all the other modules we're going to include here. And then we've got our master soft clip gain. So if you've ever used a distortion pedal, like a DS1, this is basically your mix and your gain that you would dial in to drive your distortion. So before we play with anything else and get too fancy, let's just show you what this is gonna sound like if we just start dialing in a little bit of this soft clipping into our mix. So there you can just hear that slightly sort of overdriven, distorted, chunky, crunchy sound that we all love. So in its basic level, you could just dial that in and be done with it and use that as your distorted tone. But let's jump in and take a look at these other four very cool modules and how we use them here in GarageBand. So we'll just back off some of that distortion a little bit so that we're hearing some of the other tones that we're gonna bring in and we'll scroll back to the start and start looking at these other effects. So the first effect we have here is a pretty simple delay effect. I've covered the standalone delay in a previous video, which you can check out at the top and in the description. So we can mix in, so we've got three options here. We've got a decay, a delay, and we've got the mix of our delay. So let's just hit play on this one and we'll add some delay and start mixing it in and you'll be able to hear the sort of sound we can get. So 
you can hear there, we can dial in how many milliseconds of delay we want to have. The decay is how sort of repeated that we get that and how quickly or slowly it decays afterwards and then how much we actually want to mix in. So it's pretty cool to add that to a distortion. So if we come back to the end here like that, and we add in a little bit more distortion, we can actually bring in some distorted delay sound like this. So you're combining two pretty cool plugins and getting a pretty cool sound using that. And again, that corresponds with the top section of the Mac version of the plugin, the delay. So let's jump into the second one, the ring modulator. So we'll dial the delay mix back to zero here. And then these four, frequency one, frequency two, balance, and our mix are our ring modulator. Now with this one, we wanna dial in a frequency, a frequency one, a frequency two here to, uh, to enhance the modulation uh, and then the balance as well. And then we will bring this into the mix and take a listen to what it sounds like. So you can hear it's the sort of sound that's going to work in small doses and on particular types of sounds and tracks. Maybe it's not perfect for a bass sound, but you can play around with the ring modulator and add a small amount in there. And again, just change these frequencies of the modulation around and you're going to get some unique tones to say the least. Let's move on to decimation. And just for some variety, let's change things up and come down to our electric guitar here. We'll go into our distortion plugin again. Now, at the moment, we've just got a little, well, not a little bit. We've got a decent amount of soft clip gain, and we've mixed it in to, yeah, well, let's mix it around about that halfway mark again. If we hit play on this one. So that sounds pretty cool already. Let's come in and play with the decimation and see if we can improve this again. So to get to our decimation, we need to go to, uh, well, actually it's on across both screens. So we have our decimation here, the percentage we put in here, we have our rounding, and then to actually get to our mix, we need to slide across. And here is the amount of mix in of this decimation. So I'll hit play on this one with those random settings I just put in, and we'll see what sort of sound we generate here. Pretty decimated, yeah, and that's only at 7%. So use these subtly. Uh, we'll drag this down a little bit, shall we? And uh, bring the rounding up just so that you can hear the sort of effect you can get on the tone. And yes, it is a bit annoying having to go between the two screens to do this plugin. Let's try this now. So yeah, it's acting a bit like a bit crusher kind of effect. So it's not going to work on a guitar particularly well, except for particular certain sounds, but throw this on a synth, try it out with some other instruments. It might be a cool effect that you need. Let's move on now to the final one we have here, which is our overdrive. So let's drop that decimation back down to zero. Now our overdrive here, we've got a linear, a squared, and then a cubic gain that we can add in here, which is going to add different kinds of colors and flavors to our sounds. And then this one here, the polymon <laughs> mix uh, is just our mix style. So don't worry too much about what that's called. Why it's not called overdrive mix, I don't know, because it kind of is on the original version. Anyway, let's dial these back to zero. We'll bring the mix up to, you know, let's bring it like 50% and then we'll dial these gain in and you'll be able to hear what this overdrive can do. So you can hear there that you can get different kinds of tones and sounds by changing up these overdrive settings. So being able to put a delay, ring modulator, decimation, overdrive, and then mix in your soft clipping, it's a really quite an extensive plugin. And it's a lot of options in here that you can really sculpt and craft your sound. So yes, you can use a much simpler distortion plugin like the distortion plugin built into GarageBand. But if you want this additional kind of sound and get something like this, See, I think that sounds pretty cool. If we bring that back into our mix. Yeah, there's probably just, I think it's on here. I must have left the ring modulator on there. Yeah, so that's not sounding super good. We'll come in here. Uh, we will turn that ring modulator mix off. 
Yeah, that's cool. So if we bring this back into the mix now and hit play. Yeah, very cool. Now, the one thing that a lot of folks don't use distortion on and probably should is vocals because they can be very cool to add some flavor and a little bit of that drive to your vocal to make it cut through. So, you know, I can't resist doing some vocals. So let's finish off by throwing some vocals on this track and seeing if we can use this distortion plugin on our vocals. So we've added a vocal track here. We're ready to go. Let's hit record and just record in a little vocal pass. Sometimes you need a little crunch in your vocals to make them just pop. Okay, so that is recorded in there. Let's just solo it and take a listen to it without any effects. It sounds like this. Sometimes you need a little crunch in your vocals to make them just pop. And yes, sometimes you do. So if we did want some crunch in our vocals, we can come into our plugins and EQ again. Now I didn't mention before, but you can also use the regular distortion plugin. You might be aware of this one here. If you want a simpler distortion, you can add that in there. I've got a complete other video about that linked up the top and down in the description. But for now, we want the AU plugin because this one has some cool additional options. So we'll come down, we'll go into our plugin here. And again, we can start adjusting and manipulating to our heart's content here. So let's just get rid of the delay. Let's get rid of anything else. We'll add some very simple. We'll get rid of the drive here. We'll just add in a little bit or maybe a lot of soft clipping here to start with and see what this does to our vocal. Sometimes you need a little crunch in your vocals to make them just pop. So I like doing this sort of thing on vocals and adding a bit of drive or distortion because especially if you want your vocal to cut through, if we play this back in the mix. Sometimes you need a little crunch in your vocals to make them just pop. And that might be mixed in a little bit too loud, yeah, because I wanted to kind of show the effect there. But we can try that out. And you can, again, use all of those different settings that we have, your ring modulator, your delay, all of the different things to get the sound you want. Let's finish off with something a bit fun. I've never tried out any of these ones here that we have down the bottom, our speech <laughs> speech options. I can't imagine they're going to be anything but terrible. So let's go out with uh, with one of these. Why don't we try the radio tower? This one sounds interesting, doesn't it? Sure, Pete. Uh, all right, we'll play on this one and just see what our radio tower sound. I'll turn it down so in case it sounds absolutely awful. Let's try it. Sometimes you need a little crunch in your vocals to make them just pop. Well, it delivers on what it says. It sounds like a radio tower. You could play around with those other presets and try the, the lo-fi drums and the broken speaker and all the other fun ones that probably don't sound too good. But you can see that you've got a great number of options in here. You can actually dial in. You can get some pretty cool sounds and you've got a lot of options there. And again, I'll throw it up here one more time. There is your reference point. Maybe take a screenshot of that to make sure that if you are using this plugin, you'll know what all of the different dials here and what they actually relate to on the Mac interface. There's two more videos linked down below if you want to check out some more about plugins here in GarageBand. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon, and I'll see you on the next one.